music has always held a central place in Chinese culture. The Tang Dynasty of 618 to 907 CE saw the golden age of music, but traces of popular theater involving dance, song, comedy, acrobatics, and puppetry still survive in Chinese opera today. Welcome to Music History Podcast by Viola Studio Channel. Music in Ancient China According to the ancient Chinese philosopher Confucius, To educate somebody, you should start with poems, emphasize ceremonies, and finish with music. The centrality of state ceremonial in Confucian and Taoist teaching meant that music had a complex ritual function. By the time of the Tang Dynasty, there were ten different bodies of musicians at court, including the Office of Grand Music and the Office of Drum and Wind Music. Elaborate rituals were developed for military exercises and religious sacrifices. Banquet music, Yanyu, entertained guests with extended suites, Daku, that included dances made up of five or six movements, each differently choreographed, and even longer instrumental suites for the revered Chinese zither, the Qin. Diverse musical traditions flourished outside the court, and court music was often influenced by the folk traditions of song, instrumental music, and dance that successive emperors made a point of collecting. Many of the instruments used in early court music are still played in folk music today. After the Golden Age When the last Tang emperor was assassinated, China split apart once more. Yet elements of Tang ritual music survived, notably a syllabic singing style and ceremonial bell chimes, and scholars preserved the ancient traditions. In the great intellectual revival under the Song dynasty, Chen Yang presented his 200-volume Yushu, Book of Music, to the emperor around 1100, and later Zhu Zai, the creator of Neo-Confucianism, published what he took to be Tang melodies for twelve texts from the ancient Shijing, Book of Songs. While long-held traditions were maintained, major developments occurred in song composition. Classical Shi, lyric poetry, was combined with more popular traditions, and shorter pieces were grouped into longer suites, particularly in the song form called the Changshuan, which was performed to the accompaniment of drum, flute, and clappers. One of the few early Chinese poet composers whose life can be documented in some detail is Zhang Kui. A calligrapher by training, he composed a number of songs, some of which, for example, the Song of Yang Zhou are still popular today. He also discussed the tuning of the Qin instrument in Ding Shenfa, tuning strings method, and transcribed his melodies using a notation method known as gongsh. The vocal traditions cultivated during the Song dynasty, with melodies being subject to variation and then joined together to form longer works, continued to flourish in the Yuan and Ming dynasties. The Mongols, who began their attack on China under the leadership of Genghis Khan in 1215 and eventually formed the Yuan dynasty, established huge ritual orchestras made up of more than 150 musicians. This sumptuous scale continued under the Ming dynasty and spilled over into the development of Chinese opera. Chinese Opera During the Tang Dynasty, the Emperor Xuanzong had created a theatre troupe known as the Pear Garden. In the Song Dynasty, enormous theatres capable of holding audiences of up to 3,000 people had staged variety acts that included song, dances, and comedy sketches. These lavish entertainments formed the basis of a new kind of musical theater in the Ming era, operas that elaborated heroic themes from China's past. The new genre was so popular that officials constantly sought to control it, and even attempted to ban performances by threatening the actors with the death penalty. There were hundreds of regional variations in Chinese opera, but the dominant form of the 16th-18th centuries was the Kung Fu of southern China. This form emerged in the 14th century, early in the Ming Dynasty, 
from a specific kind of melody known as the Kanshan Diao. Kung Ku would in turn influence the world-famous Peking opera, but by the early 20th century it had all but disappeared, although it is now enjoying something of a revival. China has long had a huge variety of instruments, in both popular and art music, and some types of instrument from ancient times are still used in traditional music, including Chinese opera. The sheng is a reed instrument with 19 pipes, and examples made as long ago as the 8th century still survive. It was a prominent instrument in Kung Ku music theatre, as was the zikan, a fiddle with two silk strings, played with a thin strip of bamboo, which is a distant relative of the fiddle played in Chinese opera today. Instrument of the Sages One of ancient China's most distinctive instruments is the gukin or qin. Scholars were expected to master four art forms, calligraphy, painting, chess, and the qin. Known as the father of Chinese music, this seven-string zither was so central to Chinese culture that qin schools were founded from at least the 11th century and its music was copied in a special tablature, a form of notation for fingering rather than notes. The qin is played in a different manner from Western stringed instruments. Instead of its strings of twisted silk being pressed down, or stopped, by the fingers to produce different notes, they are lightly touched, or dampened, to produce the different harmonics, or overtones, of each note. The Confucian love of systems of numbering is reflected in the so-called 24 touches, or ways of playing vibrato to vary the pitch slightly. Often richly decorated, the finest examples of the qin were prized by the Chinese elite as collectible objects. After Respect for China's musical heritage did not prevent significant advances in music theory and practice. Ming Prince Zhu Ziyu will be famous for his pioneering description of the equal temperament, a tuning system in which the 12 notes of the octave are all tuned in exactly the same ratio to one another. This is the system most commonly used, since the late 19th century, to tune instruments in Western classical music so that they can be played in any key. Zhu Ziyu's concept preceded European theory by several decades, and was possibly transmitted to Europe by Jesuit missionaries such as Matteo Ricci. Under the Qing dynasty, gongsh, a Chinese form of notation, became the most widespread of several forms in use across the country. Although less popular now, it still appears in sheet music for traditional instruments and operas. Thank you for listening to Music History Podcast by Viola Studio Channel. Please leave us your comments and opinions.